Today we're going to talk about five lenses that I use all the time with my Fuji X-T3. So I have an assortment of lenses in front of me here and I'm just going to pick one at a time and talk about what I like about it and yeah, let's get started. So starting with the 35mm f2, uh, this is the first lens that I got with my X-T2 and I really got it because it was just affordable. I couldn't really afford any other lens at the time. This is really, really amazing though. Um, F2, it's not super background blurry, um, it's, but it's really lightweight, it's really compact, and the image quality is amazing. Autofocus is really, really snappy. And um, I think that this lens is so versatile. I find myself using it quite a bit. Um, there was a time that I put it away for a while and I was just focusing on my other lenses, but um, I recently got back into shooting with this again and I can't seem to put it down. It's really, really awesome. Oh, and it's weather resistant, which is always a plus. So next we have the 23 millimeter 1.4. So this is a 35 millimeter equivalent and obviously another versatile focal length. Um, the 1.4, I, I initially got the F2 version and although that is a really great lens, very similar to this one, very small, very compact um, and weather resistant, I, I needed a bit more depth. I needed a narrow depth of field. I'm just, I'm obsessed with a narrow depth of field. Um, the shallower the better. So this was my solution to that. I sold my F2 version, I got this, no regrets whatsoever. Um, I don't really know what the drawback is compared to the F2 version. Maybe that it's way more expensive, but as far as like image quality or focus speed, I really could barely tell a difference. They're both superb. Highly recommend this lens. Um, I usually bring this out if I want to shoot an environmental portrait of someone. So if I'm shooting an editorial assignment or if I'm shooting a creative portrait where I want to incorporate the background and the atmosphere and not make it just about the subject, this is the lens that I bring out. Um, the 35 millimeter is a bit too punched in for what I'm looking for in an environmental portrait. And the 56 obviously is, is way too tight for that. So this is my go-to lens for um, kind of telling a story. So next we have probably the lens that I use the most with my X-T3, and that is the 56 millimeter 1.2. This is basically my 85 millimeter uh, replacement. When I used to shoot with Canon, I had the 85 1.2 and that lens was an absolute beast. I don't know still if I've ever shot with anything with that pronounced uh, of, of a shallow depth of field as I did with that 85 millimeter 1.2 wide open, but this does the job. Um, I won't say it, it is exactly the same as far as that creamy bokeh, but you do get a really good shallow depth of field. And the pictures, I mean, the quality is amazing. It's phenomenal. So this is something that I shoot with most often with my X-T3. If I'm shooting headshots, you know, half body shots, this is my go-to lens. So next we have the 16 to 55 millimeter 2.8. Uh, this lens is awesome and it's my workhorse lens. So if I am shooting, again, editorial assignments or if I'm shooting model tests where you kind of have to, you, you don't want to expose your lens to the elements if you're constantly changing prime lenses. I live at the beach, I do a lot of stuff at the beach. This is perfect for that because then I don't have to constantly switch lenses. I can just stick with one, uh, one lens. Um, this is also great for commercial projects. Um, the 16, the wide end of it, the 16 millimeters is perfect for getting any kind of wide shot that you need. I rarely find myself needing anything wider than 16. Um, I could see if you're shooting architecture or something that you might need something wider, but this is so versatile. I use it all the time for my commercial and editorial projects and model tests, like I said. I also like to use this lens in the studio. Um, a lot of people will say, well, don't you want something with more shallow depth of field if you're shooting portraits? And the answer is no. If I'm shooting in the studio, often I'm using strobes or artificial lights. And because of that, I don't really, I'm not really concerned with having a super shallow depth of field. If anything, I want more detail. And I'm shooting at f4, f5.6, f8. Um, I've shot commercial campaigns and this 
with entirely this and the 50 to 140 millimeter, which I rented. I actually don't own that lens. It might be something that I'll purchase in the future. And how could I forget? Lastly, the Metacon 35 millimeter 0 0.95 uh, aperture. This, I feel like, put me on the map in the Fuji community. When I first got the X-T2, um, a few months after that, I purchased this lens. My friend Peter Price was like, hey man, you should check out this lens. It's super, uh, super fast. And I think it's the fastest lens that you can shoot with uh, on the X-Series cameras. And it is magical. So the only drawback is it's manual focus. So it does force you to slow down, which might not be a drawback, but if you're used to autofocus and just shooting really quickly and snapping off a lot of shots, this is going to change the way you shoot. For me, I didn't really mind it as much. Uh, it took some getting used to, but you can get some absolutely amazing images with this lens. So I do have some tips on how to nail focus with it. Make sure you're using uh, focus peaking with your camera and uh, change the colors based off of your environment. So if you're shooting in an area where there's a, a lot of yellow or orange, then you obviously don't wanna pick yellow as your highlight color. So change that to be contrasting whatever background you're shooting in so that you can see that, um, that focus peaking better. Secondly, you wanna punch into your camera. Um, I always will zoom in when I'm shooting just to make sure that whatever is in focus is truly in focus because even the slightest deviation can throw your focus off and that's not good, especially with portraits. And third, you will probably want to switch to an Acros or black and white simulation so that you can see that color even more because when you're shooting in a black and white simulation, you can still see the color of the focus peaking highlight. So that's really gonna help you nail focus. And finally, the best thing you can do if you really wanna make sure that you have everything in focus with this lens is to start slightly front focused and turn your focus ring ever so slightly as you snap shots so that you're front focused and then eventually you end up back focused because then you're guaranteed to have the shot that you need, even if it's just one in focus shot out of the 10 that you took. So those are my favorite five lenses with the Fuji X series. I shoot these with my Fuji X-T3 all the time. Uh, if I had to rank it in most common to least common, at this point, it's probably the 56 millimeter, uh, which is something that I shoot with the most often being a portrait photographer, it makes sense. Um, and then probably my 23, followed by my 16 to 55, when I really need to uh, prioritize just getting the shots that I need and not switching lenses all the time. Um, next up would be my 35 millimeter F2, which um, I don't find myself needing as often these days, but I still love to shoot with it. And lastly, the Metacon 35 millimeter is my least often shot with lens, although I still very much love it. I will say that people ask me all the time, can you replace the Metacon with the 35 millimeter, either 1.4 version or the F2 version that Fuji makes? And I wanna say it depends on what you shoot, but most often than not, I always tell people, you probably can't replace it. I mean, it is a manual focus. And for me, this is a very specialty lens. If you're looking for a portrait with character, if you want uh, some, some magic to it, then reach for this lens. But if you're trying to shoot client work, um, it's, not the it's not the sharpest. It doesn't have the best image quality. You're gonna want uh, the 35 millimeter that Fuji makes as opposed to this one, which is more um, for creative work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and I will see you guys next time.